still in my heart right now, God. Still in our hearts, Father. Lord, we just want to be still tonight and know that you are God. So I pray that you would just still every heart, every spirit in this room. I call every spirit into attention to hear from the Lord tonight. Lord, I pray that you pour out fresh revelation to your children tonight. We expect you to move in mighty ways because your word is active and living and sharper than any two-edged sword. So we say, have your way with us tonight, God. Have your way with our hearts, God. Do the surgery that we need right here, right now, on our hearts, Father. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. So David started talking about faith last week and what it means to have faith and not have unbelief. And I love that God doesn't leave us alone in that. One of the things that Dave shared was about the man who prayed and said, God, help me in my unbelief. And I have just been praying all week, God, help me in my unbelief. Show me those areas where I need to believe. And um, I hope that that has challenged you guys, those of you who were here last week, over this last week, and I continue to just ask you to beg of God to help you in your unbelief, because it's crazy, he does. He crashes in right now as him helping me. And so um, he brought to mind John 9. So let's turn to John 9, or it'll be on the screen. Oh, this is so good. Okay. It says, so Jesus and his disciples are out and about. They're traveling around again. And it says, as he passed by, speaking of Jesus, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. We're going to stop right there. I have heard, I grew up in a Christian home and I've heard the word over and over in my life. And I realized how much of how much we miss of what God wants to tell us in every word of the Bible. Every single word is breathed by him. It says that Jesus came to be the word. And so every word that we read is Jesus. It's him speaking to us. It's him showing us something. And so right here in this first sentence we see, and as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And we've talked about this idea that I want to, you guys to get this, that Jesus sees you. And he doesn't just pass you by. Here he was because he was alive and in human form. But he sees you. He sees your condition. He sees your heart. He sees every cry. He sees every laughter. He sees you. And Man might not always see you. You guys know this. Sometimes our parents don't see us. Sometimes our friends don't see us. Sometimes Dave and I aren't going to see all of you. I'm just warning you now. Even though it's my heart to get to know each of you and see you. Like fully see you and know who you are. But I'm just man. And David is just a man. And we're not always going to see you. But please know tonight that Jesus sees you. He sees you and he is near to you tonight. And right now he's staring at you face to face, eye to eye. And he says, I see you. And here he sees a man that was blind from birth. He knows the man. He knows you. You don't have to hide anything from him. Because guess what? You're not hiding anything. You may think you are, but you're not. He sees you, and he knows you from birth. He knew this man from birth. He actually knew this man when he was created. God sees you. He's formed you. He's made you. He knows you. And it says, his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. So tonight I want us to dive into this idea of faith. And first of all, I want us to look at that first sentence again. And how it says, he sees us. Jesus is intimate with us. And one thing that you need to know about, relation, about faith is it's built on relationship. 
Faith doesn't just happen. It can, actually, God could do that. But it is built on relationship. For instance, I've had to build a relationship with my husband to trust him. And some of you may have heard some of my stories before, but my husband is very adventurous in places where I am not. And I would love to stay in my comfort zone many times in my life, but he takes me way far out of my comfort zone, where I am sometimes literally kicking and screaming, saying, we cannot do this, this is not safe. And if you knew our adventures, which I can tell you all about them sometime, you would know that I am speaking truth here. But every time we leave Stockton and go anywhere, we gotta go on a hike or do something or go on a bike ride or something and I'm just like, really, can we just go to a coffee shop and just sit and have, just hang out, you know? Like, no, we have to do something adventurous. And every time it gets to a point where we're about to like scale a waterfall or something. And no, you can't just go on a normal hike with David, just to warn you, if he invites you to go backpacking, you're not just going backpacking, okay? You're probably going without a backpack, first of all. And second of all, you're gonna end up somewhere you've never even heard of. So anyway, but literally, I'm not even joking. Our first hike together, he made me scale a wall, which I fell 30 feet into the water, okay? This is our journey through life, okay? Anyway, it's a miracle I'm here. But I love you, Benny. So anyway, every time we go on these adventures, I realize I have to choose in. I have to trust him. And over the years, I have seen what happens when we go on this, these adventures together. And I cannot tell you the most incredible sights we have seen because I've scaled a waterfall with him. And we've gone somewhere where nobody else goes and we're alone standing before an even bigger waterfall. And I'm going, glory, glory God. Thank you for the adventure. And that's what God does with you. He's got you on an adventure in life. And he says, come with me. Come with me. Just like David talked about, he reaches out his hand, right? He reached out his hand to Peter. Because he doesn't leave us. And he says, come with me. And we go on this crazy adventure with him, but we first have to do what? We have to choose in. But we choose in because we've built trust in Jesus. Because we've fallen in love with the Savior. Amen. who has a better plan than we do for our life. So when he says, oh, that's a good way you're going, but I want you over here, and you're trembling going, I cannot scale waterfalls, Jesus. He says, yes, you can. I'm going to carry you, and there's only glory on the other side. Amen. But faith is built through relationship. It's built through love. He wants you in this love relationship. So that when he calls you to do something, your response is, yes, Jesus. Amen. Let's do this. But here we see the opposite, and we see the disciples. They're on this journey. How many miracles have the disciples seen, right? And here we are again. They're approaching a man who's been, who is blind. And what is their first response? Where is the sin? You see, Jesus looks through eyes of faith. He looks through miraculous eyes. The moment he locks eyes on you, he sees how he can bring miracles into your life. That is how he sees you. That is how he sees each person he passes by. He sees a miracle. You see, the disciples are already judging right off the bat. How many times do we do that? We judge a problem right off the bat and say, well, this sucks, we're done. There's no answer here. We don't even call out to Jesus, nothing. Instead, we're, and sometimes we're like the disciples, we're going, Jesus, where's the sin? And we're judging others, or we're judging ourselves, going, well, I must not be over there because I've got sin, this sin, or whatever. But Jesus looks through eyes that are miraculous. And where he see, where you see a problem, he sees a miracle. So when he passes by this blind man, he sees a miracle waiting to happen. When he looks at you tonight, he sees a miracle waiting to happen. He's just sitting there going, oh my gosh, how can I love them tonight? He knows I can love you, actually. He's saying, I want to love you tonight. I want to pour out to you tonight. But see, when we come at it with judgment and we're just looking at the problem, 
that can shut the door to our faith. And Dave talks about we have to have this faith that believes. You see, Jesus looks through eyes that are miraculous, waiting for a miracle. And it says, Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Are you getting that? God wants to display his marvelous works in you. So when we're looking at it through eyes of judgment, when we've just got our eyes on the problem and we're not seeing how maybe God wants to move, we're blocking the display of his glory in our lives. Instead, when we see a problem in our life and we go, time for a miracle for me. Bring it on, Jesus. Imagine how that would shift your life. Every day, when you see a problem, you go, miracle God. Bring it down right now on me. He wants to move in your life each and every day. Which eyes are you looking through? Are you looking through Christ's eyes or are you looking through the disciples' eyes? Going, where's the sin? Miraculous eyes. This reminds me. When we first moved to Stockton, I told a few weeks ago about how we sold everything in Southern California, moved here with nothing, and when we were driving around Stockton, we were just praying. We were living with people, and we were just praying. And we're like, look, God, where would you want us to live in Stockton? And every time he brought us to this neighborhood, and one time we saw this big house that was for sale, this big, huge house, and we went in it, and we we kind of broke in. Okay, I'm not, you didn't hear that from me, okay? <laughs> Our friend had a key, a realtor's key, and God said use it and go in. So anyway... <laughs> I'm pretty sure I heard that. So anyway, we go in this house and we're walking around and my husband says, God just gave me a vision. We're going to live in a house like this in this neighborhood and we're going to have tons of people living with us and we're going to minister to the people in the streets right out of our house. And I started laughing. <laughs> I was like, you do realize we just sold everything and our bank account has zero in it. And we're praying to God right now for money to come in the mail to live. And he's saying, we're going to have this big, huge house. And over that next year, God really took me on a journey of faith and believing him for miracles. And almost a year later, a couple came to us that we did not know, that we knew through some people, had not fully met them yet, and said, God told us to buy you a house. Hallelujah. Here's how much money you have. Go pick out the house God has for you. Come on. That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So when you're living with people in somebody's house, you don't have income, and God says, I'm going to give you a house. Believe it. Yeah. Believe it. Yeah. Because where there is a problem, God says, I'm bringing a miracle. We have to look through these eyes. So, it's all for his glory, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Every problem in your life, don't miss this. It's so that God can display his glory in your life. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. So another aspect of faith is sometimes it calls for action, right? Most of the time, faith calls for action. Jesus said to Peter, Get out of the boat. Come to me. And what did Peter do? He had to get out of the boat to see if it was really going to happen, right? If he was really going to walk on water. And here he says to the man, go, wash your eyes. Faith takes action. But here's the thing. It's like me going on this trip with Dave. We're going along. We hit a snag because I don't want to scale the wall. I remember it was hard before, right? But it's not. It may be hard, but there's glory on the other side. 
but it requires action. Each time, I have to choose in. Because you see, I could stay on the other side and watch my husband and kids go over the waterfall, and they get to the glory, and I could just sit there and miss out on all that God had for me. But instead, we can choose in and be like the man who gets his sight back. Amen. Do you want your sight back tonight? Yes. I'm sure many of you right now, you can picture that problem right now that you're facing. Picture it for a minute. Choose one. And now, erase that. Pretend Jesus comes in. You've got to imagine this. Pretend Jesus comes in with a big eraser and erases that image. And he says, now look for the miracle. There's a miracle coming, honey. Fix your eyes on him. He's there, he's wiped it clean, and now it's just Jesus left standing there. We fix our eyes upon him, the author and perfecter of our faith, who's going to take us from glory to glory. But to get to the next glory, there's a journey. We don't just arrive at the glory. There's a journey to get there, right? And it makes the journey that much sweeter when we get to the glory. And it also makes the glory that much sweeter. Do you know how many times I get to that other side of the waterfall and I'm standing there and I'm looking around and I'm like, there's no one else here. We are the only people in the world right now that know about this place. Like along the ground. No, it was like 
as tall as this ceiling almost. Am I exaggerating? No. It was about as tall as the ceiling, and we had to scale these huge redwoods, okay? And there's water down below, okay? Scary stuff, people. But you start to do it, and you're like, this is a little exhilarating. <laughs> this is a little fun. I'm experiencing joy and peace. And whoa, take me further. That's what Jesus does with you. When you step out in faith, you start to experience this exhilarating feeling. It's called love. <laughs> and you start to experience his love. And this peace washes over you. And joy. And all of a sudden, you've forgotten all about the fear that you left on the other side of the log jam. Climb the log jam, people. There was a beautiful waterfall on the other side of that log jam, by the way, that nobody was there. So true. I will bring pictures sometime to show you guys. So good. Anyway, okay, so we see that no one recognizes this man because he's so changed. And it says that he said, I love this, I am the man. He's like, I am changed. How many, isn't that what happens when we get changed by Jesus? We go out and we're like, I'm changed! And people are like, freak! Yeah. Right? <laughs> but it's okay! Be a freak for Jesus, I say. Because then they're going to start to see Jesus. They're going to start to see this exhilarating ride that you're on. It's fun. Okay. So, he's, so they said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. Again, when you're walking with Jesus, people are going to see these miracles and they're going to go, Where is he? Where is he? You don't have to try it, this people. It is so easy. I love it. It says, they brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes and I washed and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight. I love this. They're going to call your friends and family and go, Are they really changed? Is this really that kid? The one that we grew up watching? I almost said something. Bumped into things? I don't know. He was blind. I don't know where that came from. Anyway, is this really him? I love that. When God works and moves in our lives and glory is all around us, God's glory, your friends and family are going to see this and go, what is happening? And people are going to say, is this really the same person? It's so beautiful. But another thing I want us to see here is those faith blockers. Here they start to logically reason out what has happened. We learned a few weeks ago about hearing from God that his ways are mysterious. We cannot figure out God's ways. And here they are trying to figure it out. They're saying, how has this happened? They're missing the miracles. When you sit with your logical mind and try to figure things out, you're going to miss exactly what God wants you to see. Yeah. It's right in front of you. He has miracles pouring out. And he says, stop thinking. Get your eyes on me. And watch. Just watch. But I love this. We're going to kind of breeze through this last part. It says, his parent, or, okay, the Jews brought the parents. And it says, is this your son? Who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but he now sees, but how he sees now, we do not know, nor do we know who opens his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. I love that when people don't know Jesus. They're like, I don't know what is going on with this person. Just ask them. And it says, 
These things, or they said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. How many times are we scared of God's miracles? Because they're going to take us out of comfortable places. Don't stand on the other side of the waterfall in a comfortable place. God wants to take you into his miracles. He wants to take you into glory. But when we're afraid, it keeps us in those places of fear. These parents have just seen their son, who they know was blind since birth, get his sight. And they're still in fear. How many things are you seeing God even do and you're still in fear to even acknowledge that God's moving and to even step into where he's moving because you're scared of what people are going to say or think. Maybe God's calling you into places that are pretty scary and you've got to step out in bold ways, but you're held in fear because you're afraid you're going to be thrown out of synagogue, out of the comfort zone. God has so much more for you. He has a waterfall waiting for you. Amen. He has glorious places waiting. And it says, so for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and he said to him, and said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see... Though I was blind, now I see. It's all we have to know. We don't have to explain God. He doesn't want us to. His ways are infinite. He never will. But all I know is I was a sinner and now I'm saved. I was blind, but now I see. And sometimes we need to remind ourselves that every day before we get caught up in that logical reasoning and start thinking things away. Sorry about that. We need to remember the simplicity of first I was blind, but now I see. And that will carry you through to your miracles. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? But I'll tell you. Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, why? This is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. I love that. Wow, this is amazing. You don't know him, but guess what? He opened my eyes. How many times do we get in arguments with people about Jesus? Sometimes we seem to go, wow. Have you seen what he's done in my life? Have you seen the miracles I've experienced? What else do you need? What else? I love that answer. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born in utter sin. And would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And having found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? He answered, and who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. This should be our response every day. I have seen him. Worship him. Just worship him. So good. Jesus said to them, 
For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say, we see your guilt remains. All we have to do is believe. All we have to do is fall in this love relationship with Jesus. And miracles will come. He will move mightily in your life. He will. And sometimes it may not be the way you think. And I've told you story after story about how God moves in our life in ways that he's moved in faith in our lives. And one thing I just want to share with you is I know the struggle, too, of when he doesn't move. And what does that mean when he doesn't move? And it means it's not his timing yet. See, God has perfect timing for us. Perfect timing. And he gave me this picture recently. My husband and I had a son, and then 13 years ago, and we've been trying to have more kids ever since, thought we would have this big family, and we haven't been able to get pregnant since. And we adopted Hannah, which was amazing, and God had a plan for her, and but we've had this struggle with, God, where, why can't we get pregnant? For 13 years, hoping and believing for something. And it still hasn't come, and that's okay. I know that God has better timing than me. And he has a better plan than me. And he was reminding me of how, if my 13-year-old my is very excited to drive. <laughs> I know, it's weird. He's actually tried to get us to buy a car for him already. <laughs> and my husband almost did it. And, I, <laughs> and so <laughs> I was like, not yet. So anyway, he's like, I can fix it up, mom. And, no. Anyway, and I was just, God gave me this picture of, what if my 13-year-old came to me and said, mom, I want to drive now. And I said, okay, here's the keys. Go, honey. <laughs> Lord, help the people on the road, okay? <laughs> You would all be dead if you were alongside him. I've seen him drive a go-kart, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's pretty good. He's his father's son. But what if every time we came to God and we said, I want it now, which we do most of the time, and he just handed us the keys? Think of the damage we would do to ourselves and others. God has perfect timing for whatever you are facing in your life. And I am believing with you tonight. I am believing alongside you tonight. I have seen God work in miraculous ways. I have seen people healed right in front of me. I know he is a God of miracles. And that does not stop me when I'm not getting what I think I want. God knows you. He sees you. He is intimate with you. And he knows the best for his children. And he has the best timing for you. And he says, oh man, I can't wait till you're 16 and I can hand you the keys. <laughs> <laughs> He's got perfect timing for you. And it's going to be that much sweeter when you get to the waterfall. Because you've gone through the journey. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you to my God. We thank you for the journey, God. Right now, just tell God, say, thank you for the journey. Thank you for the journey. Yes. We say yes to the journey, God. We say yes, God. We say yes to all you have for us, God. And Lord, I pray right now for every problem that is in this room, God, that you would wash it away right now. Wash it away, God. And I pray for miraculous eyes tonight. Yes. That eyes would be open to see you, God, and how you're working and moving. Lord, we worship you in this place. We worship you right now, God. We are so in love with you, God. Thank you, more importantly, that you are so in love with us. So in love with us. We worship you, Jesus. Still our hearts, God, to hear you speak. In Jesus' name.
there's communion on the sides if you guys want to take it out tonight.